Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the Internet's most passionate wine program. Mr. Mott, I'm very excited about this show. I have referenced cereal and wine pairings for maybe three years now, and I don't know why it's taken us so long to do the official What Wine Pairs with Cereal show, but we've finally done it. Now, I've not had these wines, but these are stylistically the wines that I would pair with these other cereals. These are three iconic cereals, some of the most exciting brands in the world, and uh, I'm very excited about trying these three delightful beverages alongside with cereal. I think a lot of people are tuning in right now and saying, is this a joke? And I want people to really understand. I'm not trying to be silly here. I understand that cereal and wine are not the normal pairing, and you might think I'm stretching here. However, cereal is probably my favorite food in the world. And obviously I'm in the wine business. And many of times have I had long wine parties or events and then had cereal late night, more than morning, cereal late night and just eating it and then kind of saying, ah, oh, you know, here's the wine. And what I realized is there is a place for wine to be paired with cereal if there are two types of things that you love as much as I do. And so, I'm excited about sharing the kind of pairings that I think work well with you guys today. A couple things that I have to do. First, let's read some comments. We haven't done that in a while. Big shout out to Surf City J, who's awesome. GB, great guest. You need to get him on again if he'll come on as you interrupted him way too often. He had so much to say and we didn't get to hear half of it. Steve Bajerkli says, Gary, please take a class in interviewing. You're preventing us from learning what we should from your distinguished guest. And KTF says, Great show, what a gentleman. Anyway, I have a cellar full of moderately priced wines. I'm now looking to purchase only classic wines to top off my cellar. P.S. Gary, learn how to interview. I'm just kidding on that P.S. side. But to address the two people prior, Surf City, Jay, and Steve Bajerkli, I have gotta tell you guys, um, thank you for commenting and supporting the show, it means so much. I know a lot of you got emails from me Over the last week, I'm emailing a lot of the people that are leaving comments now, reading them, and now emailing you guys to interact because I appreciate it so much. I just want to say this once and for all, and I've said it multiple times via email to many of you. Mod and I are in a tough spot. We don't edit, and I want to kind of move the shows along. And I know I've gotten better in some shows, and if you watched part one of the Torlato interview, it was great. But as I once I realized, and Mott was starting to get worried, what you didn't know is that the camera was gonna stop, you know, you've gotta move it along a little bit. We don't edit. This isn't Oprah. This is not Katie Couric. We don't have the luxury. I do the TV shows. I know how much editing goes in. They cut it down. We don't. It's real and authentic, but it does make me come across as a jerk, and I apologize for interrupting. Now, that's not to get me totally off the hook, because if you hang out with me and drink wine, and hang out and watch football with me, or hang out at all, I interrupt as well. It's what I do. I'm bad. I'm working on it. I'm trying. I apologize to you, the Vayner Nation, for all my shortcomings. Now, if you're getting just back from the Labor Day weekend, the two episodes below here, the two-part Torlato episode, if you care about the history of wine, if you're interested in the wine business at all, you need to watch it, right, Matt? And if you're around or thinking about coming to New York on Saturday, October 10th, I highly recommend you go to the New York Food Network Wine Festival dinner that I'm hosting. Please come. It's tasting, not a dinner, really. Please come to this event. Mott, link that up. I'm very excited about it. About 15 tickets left. So that's filling up. That's exciting. And I know a lot of you have been waiting for the Crush It Cruise announcement. That is coming this week. We waited for Labor Day to end. You can mark your calendars down now, March 20th to the 27th. It's going to be phenomenal. Can't wait. Wine and cereal, Mr. Mott. Let's go right for the big one because it's the right pairing-wise with wine. This is the single greatest product. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have saw me say, I am a firm belief that this is the single greatest product ever produced in the world. This is Captain Crunch cereal. Not with a little zoomy zoom zoom. Now, the creator of Captain Crunch actually makes a Zinfandel out of California. That would be the interesting pairing. But the right pairing has always been for me, and this is probably the one that I do the most of. These other two I tested leading up for the show, styles, not the exact wines. This is the one that I know hard, I know cold, I know it's the pairing. This, my friends, is a Riesling Spatlese, a sweeter Riesling from Germany. Specifically, what I have in front of me is a very exciting uh, producer, Von Keschelstadt. This is the 2007 Von Keschelstadt Riesling 
Spatlisa, Schwarzhofberger, 95 points, Wine Spectator, 30 US dollars. So as you can see, 95 points. We're not fooling around. 95 bones, great little acidity coming through. A um, little sparkly action, not really acidity. Um, the nutrition facts here in the Captain Crunch are a little tough, I understand. Let's give this wine a snippy sniff, I almost said a sniffy sniff. Sniffy sniff. Getting this great golden apple and like Lipton tea bag smell on the nose. A little mix of both. Um, a little bit of pear coming through on the nose as well. Great nose. A little peach fuzz action. Just pretty, pretty. Let's give it a whirl. Let's lay this over here, no room. So this is a sweet wine, no doubt about it. Um, not over the top dessert wine, a little bit more just like a hint of sweetness, like somebody put a sugar cube kind of in your seltzer. Um, really great acidity coming through, very sharp pear meets apple flavors, very tropical. I get a papaya and a guava component on the mid palate that really linger. A very vibrant wine. Do you think the spectator went a little high at 95? Give it more shot. But nonetheless, this gorgeous, vibrant Riesling is coming across, and if you love apple juice, pears, things of that nature, you're gonna absolutely love this. Now, with the amazing Captain Crunch, I would say this is probably, by the way, I'm just gonna jump in, probably like a 92 point wine. Now, with the Captain Crunch, I'm sorry. I know that was a, that was probably the longest period of silence in Wine Library TV history, but Captain Crunch is delicious. You just got this. I mean, just do you like Captain Crunch? Mm -hmm. It's so good, man. It's rough on your teeth, though. Yeah, no, the roof of your mouth. Yeah. It's cut. You just cut your roof of your mouth. So you get this really delicious kind of like Captain Crunchy flavor. Let's pair it now. Now. There's something very important to understand. Riesling has high acid. If you eat too much Captain Crunch, you will cut the top of your roof, of your mouth. So what happens is, you get the acid and it feels it, and it gets stingy, right? It's like putting salt on a wound. You gotta be careful. There's a fine line to walk here, but the goodness, goodness, goodness of Captain Crunch And a 95 point scored Riesling, 92, 91 plus, is maybe the pinnacle, the most hedonistic eating event that I can think of. This to me, my friends, and I'm not kidding, is way up there. One of the great pairings, again, I have this really, not sad feeling, but worried feeling that a lot of people think this is a shtick and something funny, this works. Try it at home, go out and try it, you'll be blown away, and it becomes the perfect kind of Sunday brunch kind of thing to do. I, I, I don't know, there's something about Sundays, it's when I'm home a lot of times to do this. I, I just love this, you know, Oscar night, you love cereal, you love wine, great combo. I give this the Captain Crunch 100 points. I just do, because I always will. And this pairing really works. It's the one I know cold, and I'm very happy, and let's move on. This next pairing is very exciting to me and I think has real potential to become one of the big crazes in the US. Everybody loves Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I mean, my, people love this cereal. You, you, you're you not a fan? I'm uh, a little more of a Golden Grahams. Golden Grahams guy. I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. This is landmark 2007 Overlook Chardonnay. 20 US dollars, 92 points wine spectator, 
81% of the fruit comes from Sonoma County. Uh, the rest comes from 11% from Santa Barbara and 8% from Monterey. Uh, one of the really interesting producers of Chardonnay, I like the bucket down here, Mom. Uh, one of the interesting producers of uh, Chardonnay in the world because they consistently pump out this great golden oaky, uh, little oak monster, oaky Chardonnay, but it goes really creamy and buttery, scotchy, caramel action, which is the absolute thing that you wanna do with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. As you can see, the color is much more golden than the prior wine. Let's give this a snippy snip. Right off the bat, I mean, right off the bat, it hits you with this intensity of like burnt bark. It's like Smokey the Bear got handcuffed and people got a little rowdy in the forest. You know, like trees are burning in your nose when you smell this wine. There's a little buttered action as well. And I do get a little bit caramelized, kind of like candied apple play. Absolutely, let's give it a whirl. Big Chardonnay, um, very dry, and has a little bit of like a nutmeg, nutty component on the back end. I was looking for an oaky, buttery Chardonnay. I knew Landmark made it in this style. I think Spectator's a little high at 92 points. This falls more into the category of like an 88, 89 point wine for me. A little disappointed with it. Not too oaky, which is nice, but definitely that smoked, burnt kind of forest fire thing. Kind of like, you know, a little charcoaly on the end as well. Now, what Cinnamon Toast Crunch does, especially when it's nice and soggy, because it's all about, so do you like soggy or? Yeah, I'm all about soggy too. A lot of people like it the other way. Mm. Cinnamon Toast Crunch has always competed with Captain Crunch for my palates, you know, very close. Anyway, great cinnamon flavors, kind of cracker-like, graham cracker play. I'm convinced that if you like butter, oaky, butterscotch, caramel, naturally, if you think about desserts, cinnamon, is always in play with custard and things of that nature. And this pairing, even, this is my favorite pairing, but it's so over the top. Like I said, hedonistic. This pairing really is like almost like, I basically feel like I just ate creme brulee. You know, so you get this really great creamy buttered play from the landmark. This cinnamon toast crunch dramatically accentuates the nice aspects of the landmark. And you get a little bitterness on the back end of the palate, but not too crazy. This is really, this is pretty darn delicious. A really nice pairing. And I would venture to say, for the people that don't like too sweet, this may be even a more popular pairing than the last one, though for my palate, is not as interesting. And finally, Lucky Charms. Now Lucky Charms is just, I mean, we're doing some good things here, Mom. I really enjoy this. Look at this little thing down here. They got the whole thing with the charms. And they want to remind you it's good for calcium and vitamin D, Mom. I'm sure Lucky Charms are massively healthy. Um, Lucky Charms are also extremely visually interesting. Mom, you, get, you getting some charms in here? You might have to pick up the camera. There you go, boss. You know, as you can see, it's very pretty, Mom, in comparison to the last two cereals. What I think about with this is, and this is really the play. I did it with Moet, but because I was testing, and I didn't want to do the same one, so we have to go to Clico. Kind of, it's a brother in arms, as they say. This is the Clico Demisec Champagne. So this is slightly sweet. Um, if you're somebody who is looking for sweetness in their bubblies, and you don't want to buy Asti Spumanti as a gift or for your spouse that likes sweetness, you want to look for the demi-sec champagnes. This is 40 US dollars. Uh, really nice bubbles, let's give it a snippy sniff. Kind of like, you get like an almond paste kind of thing going on in the nose. 
really neat kind of um, almost like uh, cookie dough. Cookie dough. Yes, like chocolate chip cookie dough. And almond paste on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Better than its count counterpart from Moet. Um, you get that nice sweetness. It's a very popular style. It's almost kind of like, you know those lemon slices that are sugared, you know, those li like those jelly lemon candies? This one kind of reminds me of a little baked bread as well. Now, let's get into the Lucky Charms. Now clearly this is magically delicious. Mm. Mm. Really good. I mean, the charms are delightful. You Lucky Charms guy at all, Matt? Yeah, I've, I, I'm not too big of a Lucky Charms guy as well, but you know, I gotta be honest with you. I might be missing the boat. Hold on one second here. Mm. It's all about the captain. Anyway. I'm doing a pairing, so I gotta get the Lucky Charms flavor back. Good acid on the back end of the champagne. This one works a little bit more awkwardly. The last two really molded. This one a little bit less than I remember. I don't know if this is lacking a little bit of the sugar that I found in the Moet Demi Sec. But there's a little bit of like a conflict here. The, the, the Demi Sec bubbles from Clico by themselves pretty much act like an 87, 88 point bubbly to me. At 40 bones, a major pass. This combo really doesn't work actually. Well, that would be, an, excuse me, an overstatement. In comparison to the last two, it definitely doesn't work. Um, but it's trying to do its thing. It's just a little disjointed, not really coming together as much as I'd like. It's okay-ish. Um, at the end of the day, these two pairings are fantastic. This is a great, great Riesling. These are three iconic cereals. Please open up your mind and realize cereal and wine, they can go together. I'm telling you, it's not the natural thing you think of, but especially the Chardonnay pairing with the Cinnamon Toast Crunch was shocking and perfect. Um, again, balmy on this stuff and a little bit ragged on the last pairing. I'm sorry, it didn't work out as much as I had hoped, but fun for me. I love cereal, I hope you do as well. Question of the day, very simple. And this one, I feel like a lot of people can come out and answer. What is your favorite cereal? Simple as that. And uh, I feel like I'm gonna make my Jets prediction early this week. You know, a lot of you who've just joined the show, I get very serious about football this time of year. I'm gonna predict that the Jets are gonna struggle with the Titans, I, well, excuse me, with the Texans. We'll get the Titans week three. I'm very worried about it. No Calvin Pace. What's that? We're away. We're away. Nice. They're tough, the Texans at home. No Calvin Pace, no Sean Ellis, both suspended. I'm a little bit worried. Sanchez's first game. I'm gonna go 17-16 Jets, but that's only because I don't want you guys to get the satisfaction of seeing me predict against them. I'm very worried, Matt. 0-4 would not be insane. Pats, Titans, New Orleans could put up a billion points. I'm worried, but I'm positive. You. With a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is better than I remember it. Mm. 